to the vlog. If you're new here, welcome and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when I post a new video. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Cassie and I am a wife and a mom that has cerebral palsy. For today's video, I've had some requests to talk about my experience um, working as a disabled social worker and to kind of uh, bring you up to speed about where I am. I need to tell you kind of where I've been and what led me up to here. So um, my cerebral palsy is um, spastic cerebral palsy and most people would probably probably consider me like medium to severe but I think I'm pretty moderate. I um, walk funny and I fall down a lot but uh, mentally I function good. So um, you know growing up like I've said in previous videos I have um, always thought you know I was normal I was treated normal so I thought that other people would treat me normal and I'd be able to get a job when I was 16 like everybody else so rewind back a, a few years ago <laughs> when I was 16 and wanting to earn some money I uh, remember applying for job after job after job at movie theaters, restaurants, clothing companies, telemarketing companies, and I could never get a job. And, you know, I could never, like, prove that it was because of my disability, um, but it, it certainly felt like that. I mean, Granted, I didn't have a lot of experience working, but what 16-year-old does, right? You have to start, <coughs> excuse me, you have to start somewhere. So, um, I think when I was about 17, I went to a local movie theater, um, and surprisingly, but not surprisingly, this movie theater is not around anymore, but I went to the local movie theater, and they had signs everywhere that said that they were hiring. Um, so I went and I um, filled out an application and on the application it says to ask for the manager. So I asked for the manager and um, he comes up and, you know, I get his name and I said, hey, you know, I saw that you guys are hiring. Here's my application. Uh, and he kind of looked me up and down and then said, oh, I'm sorry, you were mistaken. We're not hiring. And I said, well, um, there's a whole bunch of signs everywhere, so if that's not right, you should probably take them down. Um, so I left, and I was really frustrated, and I remember telling my family about it, and uh, my sister-in-law, she was like, that's not right. You know, let, let's do an experiment and see if they will hire me, and then we'll know that we have a case. And so she went, and she filled out the application and asked for the manager and we made sure it was the same manager that I spoke with because I remembered his name and wrote it down and so she went and she said hey um are you know I see that you guys are hiring here's my application you know do we need to have an interview what's the next step and he said oh no we're that's fine we're hiring when can you start and uh she said oh, well, actually, um, I'm not going to be working here and you'll be hearing from my lawyer. So right then and there, it was like, okay, it was obvious that he didn't feel comfortable hiring me. And the Americans with Disability Act states that as long as um, somebody is able to do their duties with reasonable accommodations, you cannot discriminate against them in the workplace. Well, I definitely felt discriminated against, and so I did some research and um, reached out to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and told them my case, and, you know, they said, you do have a case, it's probably going to take a while, and, I mean, essentially, you could work there if you wanted. And the point was, well, why would I want to work there if they were treating me like that before I even started? And so I decided not to pursue. 
But at that moment, me and my family realized that in order for me to be able to have a career and get a job as a disabled person, I was going to have to go to college. Um, and so when I was 16, that's when everything started rolling into place. I did some research on what schools I wanted to go to, um, what degree I wanted to get, if I needed to get a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, that type of thing. I ended up deciding to go into social work because as a disabled person, you work with a lot of different types of social workers and social service agencies. And I had some good experiences and I also had some bad experiences. And so I wanted to be the social worker that gave people good experiences. So I ended up um, going to Brigham Young University, Idaho. And my original plan was to um, just get my bachelor's degree. But the more that I, <clears throat> I went to school and spoke with the teachers, we realized that a bachelor's degree wasn't going to get me where I wanted to be. And so I needed to um, go get my graduate degree and get a master's degree. So I ended up going to the Un University of Texas at Austin to get my bachelor's degree. And, you know, that was a really good experience. It was very eye opening. Um, very different than where I'm from, but that's exactly why I wanted to go there because I wanted to see all different types of perspectives because as a social worker, you work with all different types of populations and people. <clears throat> so um, after I graduated, I actually got a job at the National Domestic Violence Hotline. And it was interesting because when I had a degree, it was like totally different. Like, okay, she has the qualifications. Um, she can do her job even if she has to do it in a wheelchair. So I didn't really feel like I was being discriminated against. And, and that was the whole point. Like going to college to get a degree so you can have a career you're going to be a lot more successful than just trying to apply for a job because a job and a career are different. And if you can prove to yourself that you're qualified and you're just as good as anybody else, then they should hire you. So anyway, the National Domestic Violence Hotline was my first official job and I worked the swing shift. So uh, I worked from I think it was 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. And I was a hotline operator for people who were calling who were in abusive relationships. And that was a really rewarding job, but the burnout was definitely very relevant and present. And so I decided to quit that job and move back to Utah where my family was from. That job was a great stepping stone and a good job and enough to kind of get my foot in the door and then when I came back to Utah I applied for a job at the Salt Lake County District Attorney's Office working for victims of crime during court um, and so working at the disability or the uh, what is it the National Domestic Violence Hotline gave me that experience to apply at the county. And this experience was also, it was good. It was very much, how can we accommodate you? What do you need? Because as part of the job, you had to go back and forth to court. And so it was, do I need a wheelchair? Do I need a walker? Do I need to drive there? And I was very nervous because it was very much a professional setting. And I remember in the interview, they asked me if they feel like my disability was going to hinder me or make me, you know, better as, you know, a social worker. And I flat out said, you know, um, I think the fact that I'm part of a vulnerable population will help people connect with me more. And I'm not afraid to address the elephant in the room of the disability. Like, hey, um, 
you probably noticed that I walk funny and you know if that makes you uncomfortable that's totally fine we can assign you to somebody else but that never happened nobody was uncomfortable because of my disability I think I was a little bit more uncomfortable at first or the first time I fell in court or on my way to court um, but I guess the moral of the story is like you deserve a job just like anybody else and but you have to work just as hard if not harder than anybody else so if you're not getting the type of job you want then go figure out how, what you need to do differently to get it maybe that's not the right job for you maybe you need to go to school um, and get a degree and there's things in place at universities where they can get you aids they can um, make sure that the buildings are accessible and if they're not then you fight for that um, the school that I went to in Texas the social work, work building was old and was not very accessible so I met with the Dean and I was like how are we gonna fix this so use those experiences that aren't working for you and that don't make it easier for you to make change and advocate for others that are going to come in the future um so my job with the district attorney's office um i absolutely loved it and then i became pregnant and so we did have to make some adjustments because i wasn't able to walk as much because um it was harder as i got pregnant and so they were willing to make the adjustments they changed the doors so that they were handicap accessible they changed some of the things that i did to make it easier for me and they did that because that's the law and they needed to do that um, i ended up working there for 10 years and then i decided to quit when i had my baby um, and eventually I got another job. It's um, at a private practice as a licensed counselor. It's um, Inner Peace Counseling of Utah. And um, this was like my dream job. I've always wanted to have, like be part of a private practice and have my own clients. But again, I was so nervous because I didn't know how people would react. And even when me and my boss were deciding what to put on the website we were going back and forth of, and it wasn't even my boss it was more me of should I put that I have cerebral palsy so people are aware should I not put that you know what was I comfortable with what was she comfortable with and essentially she let me do whatever I want and so I'm pretty sure I haven't looked in a while but I'm pretty sure we put that I have cerebral palsy and because of that I feel like I can help others that are part of vulnerable populations. So I just address the elephant in the room right when it comes so then people don't have questions. And then when I do have clients, I, I do say, you know, when we first meet with them, it's kind of hard not to notice in person. I say, my name's Cassie, you know, I'm, I've been a social worker for this long. Um, I do have cerebral palsy, but it only affects the way that I walk. But if that's a problem for you, please let me know and we can switch counselors. And again, nobody has ever said, at least to my face, that they're uncomfortable or has switched because they're uncomfortable with the disability. And, you know, I love this job and I'm still learning, but it just proves that we can be contributing members of the workforce um, again you may not be able to do the same types of jobs you may have to do something different or not work at a fast food or whatever but don't sell yourself short because of your disability go to college there are plenty of people in wheelchairs and walkers and who have AIDS or need their parents to go with them to college but they still do it and then they get jobs after because there's no argument of you're not qualified because you have a degree and so I don't know I hope that this video helps those of you that are thinking about going to school or having trouble getting a job don't give up keep looking 
keep bettering yourself. And even like getting an educa education doesn't even necessarily mean you have to go to college, but continue to learn online, teach yourself things so that you, you do have qualifications. And remember, if you feel like you have been discriminated against, there are resources out there to help um, support and fight for your rights. So don't just sit back and let it happen. Fight for your rights. Um, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button or share this video if you feel like it would be helpful for other people. Um, also, I will have in the link in the description of the counseling place that I work. I will also have a link um, to my website where you can learn more about um, the counseling that I do, public speaking, that type of thing. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.